Welcome to Inspired Changemakers, a podcast about all the amazing things people are doing to make the world a better place. This podcast is about creating change and the moments that inspired our guests to activate. My name is Julia Healy, and I'm the CEO of United Charitable. Stay tuned to be inspired. Well, Larry, thank you so much for being on my podcast today, Inspired Changemakers. And here we're talking about really people's ability to change and what made them activate and how they're fighting to make the world a better place. Wow. That's that's powerful right there. Right there. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, Julia, Larry Asante, came to the United States of America when I was nine years old, started playing football. By the grace of God, I'm here today. But um, originally from Ghana, my, my dad moved here for a better opportunity uh, for his children, for his family. My dad was an inspiring lawyer until he fell into some sickness. Mm. Um, kidney failure. So we came here ba- we came here for a better opportunity uh, through school. Originally, my father brought me and my brothers here to be lawyers and doctor. I was the doctor and my brother was supposed to be the lawyer. So <laughs> <laughs> and you disappointed him by being a football player now. <laughs> um, I think he's proud in the direction um that he's stirring. My father was the type of father that he encourages kids to, you know, follow and chase your dreams and he wasn't the father that was going to you know, implement his his will or his desires upon his kids. Whatever lane that his kid chose to, you know, pursue, he okay. would support you 100% with love. Um, and I'm inspired to, you know, be a better father because of him. Uh, and he's the reason why I'm sitting here today. And so tell me a little bit about your playing career. 2000, 2010, I was drafted in the fifth round by the Cleveland Browns. Spent spent a year in Cleveland, ended up getting traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, played two years in Tampa. 2013, I played in Indianapolis for a season. I wasn't there too long. And then 2015 to 2018, I was in Oakland when we were the Oakland Raiders, and then they moved to Vegas. And uh, that was pretty much when I hung up the cleats and uh, started chasing – um, this entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and literally just trying to help people. Um, and I've been focused a lot. I, my main focus has been basically here in America, um, in, in, in Georgia in particular. But now we're kind of changing gears and focusing a little bit more on on the motherland, Ghana, where the soil in which my ancestors are from. And tell me, what is your earliest memory of philanthropy? Earliest memory? Um, I would I would I would say probably around 2018 right after I had retired my father um sat me down and we had a conversation and he was like hey Larry what is next I know your heart you know you have a heart for people like what do you want to do and I was like dad I want to be a bridge between Africa and America to be able to you know you know connect a bridge you know a lot of guy a lot of people or a lot of former players you know they have a hard time with being able to, you know, tap into that sword back there because there's a lot of fear, anxiety. They don't know what to expect. Right. So it is a mission of mine to be able to, you know, create that opportunity for people to be able to travel back over there. And that's how it kind of all started. And then, you know, fast forward to, you know, my late father passing away. We went all back right. for the – it's, it's, it's all right. He's in a better place. You know, he's, he's he, absent from the body. He's present with the Lord. So I know where he is, and I find comfort in that. So I went back, surveyed the land, you know, just to kind of see what people needed, started taking notes, um, going from village to village, yeah. identifying problems. And uh, it was a lot of issues. It was a lot of issues that we ran into, just basic um, basic needs of, of, an, of an average human being. They don't have it, like clean water, mm. lights, food, you know. So because of that... I felt like I wasn't doing enough, and then I came back and literally started running with it, um, talking to people, uh, going go, going from cause to cause to you know the voices that are not heard back over there. I want to be that voice that speaks for you know the continent of Africa and those people that are like hidden in, in, in darkness and in dungeons that can't you know that can't speak out that don't have a voice. I want to be a voice for those that can't speak for themselves. If that makes any, any sense, absolutely. Yeah. 
And I think really when you're, uh, you said entrepreneur, but I'm going to add a little title to that social entrepreneur. You're trying to create social change. Yes. Yes. Ma'am. Um, what really, why do you think you're put on the surface to do that? So I call myself, I call myself the bridge. Mm -hmm. I really truly feel like God put me on this earth just to help people. The blessing is not for me. It is not for my kids. It is not for those who come after me. We are fine. My family is fine. Literally, I think God, no, I don't think, I know for sure that God put me on this earth to help people. And right now, my main focus is on that soil back there in Ghana. But it's for everybody. It's for everybody. Like this movement, I plan on starting at Ghana and migrating to Togo, migrating to Benin, Nigeria, Kenya, and literally spreading that light. It's faith in football. I tell people all the time, it's faith in football. And how we're grabbing their attention is just the football aspect of it. Right. But we're bringing faith. We're bringing faith. We're bringing faith because if you have faith as that anchor and you're plugged into that source, it's like a battery. Like a charger plugged into that source forever. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what program we bring to your country. Right. If you have that, if you have that source and you're plugged into the Lord above, you can accomplish anything. And that's when magic happens. I think we're magical beings. So talking about that is how I really got introduced to philanthropy or had more of a passion about philanthropy is actually through football. So, you know, my parents' philanthropy, they always gave back and, and stuff like that. But it wasn't really until, again, I'm sitting in that stands and the players' causes would come across the screen mm -hmm. that I would start to take interest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit older than you, right? So my player, so Brian Dawkins, Malcolm Jet, like my player. Brian Dawkins is my favorite safety. He, you have no idea. I love that man. He loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. And I literally model like my game after him. Do you know him on Instagram all the time? He gives like, you know, he gives us tips and things. And I, all the time, I feel like he's speaking to me. Like he, I needed to hear that Bible verse. I needed to hear exactly what he's telling me that day. And I know it's not meant for me because he doesn't, but it's really something about, and especially I guess him and his position in safety, right? That he, when he, I felt like he would, when he would go make that hit, it would be for the city of Philadelphia. He did it for me, like personally me. And when his causes and what he cared about started being highlighted, I really just gravitated towards it. And so I appreciate when professional athletes use their brands and their influence to highlight different causes. Um, for the people that are struggling to do that, how do you really feel? How would you guide them into telling or informing them of how to feel their cause? I would say... I'd like to thank United Charitable for sponsoring today's Inspired Changemakers podcast. United Charitable is a national nonprofit that focuses on guiding you on your charitable journey. Whether you like to simply streamline your giving or you like to create your own charitable initiative, United Charitable has the knowledge and resources to support you. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in our bio. It all depends on, you know, what, what's important to you. You know, legacy, legacy is very, very, very important to me and what we leave back. Um, at my father's funeral, like I, I was saying earlier, just to hear what he did for other people while he was here on earth, you know, that, that motivated me, you know, to just do more, you know, reach out and see who I can help. So I would say to, to the young man who just walked away from football, whatever it might be, Mine was inspired by the Lord, you know, and God just, I asked God, I was like, Lord, what is my purpose now that I'm not playing football anymore? I know I'm not just a football player. What would you have me to do now that I'm not playing no more? And the good Lord literally led me back to that continent, and so much was identified when I was there. And we take those things for granted here in the States. So yeah. little things like my, my, my sister um, she has, she has a cause where she just passes out sanitary pads, you know, and that is like a big issue there, you know, just simple things like that that we take yeah. for granted, you know, and just going back and just seeing the struggles. I was like, listen, I, I, I got to do more, you know, I got to do more and I have to, sh I have to, sh I have to shed light on what is actually going on because so many people are like crying and suffering behind closed doors. And like I was saying before, they have no voice. My goal is to be able to give the people of that continent, not just that continent, whoever needs 
aid so that they can live comfortable lives and be able to, you know, thrive and, and prosper. That is my goal. I call myself the equalizer, equalizer playing field. But I also think it, it's about creating the community of people that want to help, right? Especially here in the States, and we're really blessed in so many different ways, but there's so many people that want to help. Yes. How can they help you? So right now, you know, we partner with MedShare, and one thing we're doing right now is sending medical aid back. So literally, like Hannibal, Athletes Charitable, they donated, they donated clothes. So there's so many things that's needed. The things that, you know, we might think is not needed here, you know, yeah. um, is definitely needed over there, and they can do something with it. So right now we're in the process of taking donations or, you know, however you want to help monetary, if you want to um, – assist with with time with knowledge information whatever it might be we need it all because the help the aid um is definitely needed back on that soil and how does this help you honor your father's legacy being able to you know watch a young a young lady a young man you know just smile because they got a meal to eat because they got new shoes because Mom was able to buy a fresh pair of uniform. Um, they got new kicks to be able to go to school. You know, that smile on their face brings me joy, and it, and it reminds me of my father because my, my father had the biggest heart, and he always had a smile on his face. It was said at my, my father's funeral that it can be chaos anywhere, but when my father walked into that room, it was gentle, and everybody calmed down. He was like a quiet storm. So being able to see a family you know, support a family with donations of rice, whatever it might be, right. and they can eat for, like, months. That brings me joy, and I literally, like we were talking about, I feel my father's presence when I see a young kid smile. It's almost like, I don't know how people, how people might feel about this, but African spirituality, it's almost like my father has taken the form of that kid, and he's coming back just to smile, just to see my face. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, the greatest feeling in the world and I'm like getting goosebumps talking about it and you know you talk about impact and Im impact can mean all sorts of different things how would you know when how do you know that you're doing enough or how do you know what you're doing is the right thing <sighs> to be honest so lately yeah. I don't I don't know how, I don't know you know in, in in spirituality African spirituality they say if you keep seeing numbers repeating itself if you keep seeing numbers repeating itself, like the universe literally is talking to you and like you're walking in your purpose. Yeah. Ever since my father passed away, I've been seeing one, 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 two, two, just numbers repeating, repeating, really? repeating. And I'm like, yo, what does this mean? And literally, I feel like the universe was talking to me. Brother, you are walking in your path. We're happy with you. Keep pursuing the path. And literally, that's what I've been doing. Just chasing, 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 chasing. Uh, my purpose and helping people um, and helping people brings me joy. I'm not even uh, helping people and just seeing kids smile, you know, brings me joy. I love children. Like I li I have three kids myself. How I old? Nine, seven, and three. Okay. I love, my son is about to turn three, uh, June 9th. I love children. I love children. And to be able to help children, feed children, um, like I was telling you, I have an orphanage back home in, in Kumasi. Uh, and it was inspired by my father too. I built it. There's so much we've done, like on on the radar. We built yeah. we built churches. I built churches for communities so that people can go worship and they can get saved through the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior. And yeah. people literally come to my church. They say, "Man, whoever did this, God bless him." And I feel that, and I feel like that's what's been carrying me, and that's what has been the source of my strength ever since my father passed away. Like the prayers of those that go and worship at that temple that I built for people. And it, I built that temple. Uh, Three years into NFL, because I always said that, Lord, if you bless me and took me to, you know, this stage, I would always give back. And now it's like a continuation of what I started, just giving back to those people on that soil. And how do you think change happens? Change with education. Education. Informing the people. Giving them as much information as possible. And then letting them decide what they want to do with that information. And I think that's how we inspire change. And how do you think you came to that belief? Is that something your father did? Yes, I believe. Yeah, his life, his life was changed. A man coming from, from Ghana, coming here, having to learn a whole new system, you know, 
And America, it, America doesn't care if you're a king. <laughs> America don't care if you're a king. So he had to literally come here as an entrepreneur, figure it out, taking care of his family. He has kids. Um, and I think just his story, his story has sparked literally everything. And he is my motivation. He is my inspiration. And uh, he's my guardian angel that literally is pushing me to you know, help these people. And do you think that everything that we have gone through and all of the paths that we take lead us to where we are today? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the good Lord and the journey. Our stories have already been written. So with me and the faith that I have in God, I, I don't worry about tomorrow. I don't care about the past. I literally just walk in the moment, walk in my purpose today. And what does God have for me to do right now and today? Right. And I don't, worry about, I don't worry about the future. I don't worry about none of that because I know it's taken care of. My faith tells me that. And my ancestors, I pray that my ancestors guide me and lead me. And they, they don't lead me along a, 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 narrow, a, straight, a straight path. I never want to stray away because I know they're watching over me. And that's the accountability. It's like the Holy Spirit. You know, mm -hmm. they're always there and you have to make them proud. I would like to thank Athletes Charitable for sponsoring today's Inspired Changemakers podcast. Athletes Charitable offers a concierge membership service that provides the tools and resources to build a legacy through service. Our athlete-led team has the first-hand experience and expertise to provide hands-on support that simplifies the entire process for athletes and entertainers to reach their social entrepreneurship goals and create lasting impact in their communities. To learn more, check out the link in the bio. That's so hard for me. Just FYI, like on a personal level, like that letting go and letting and understand that I'm in the places that I'm in for the reason is so hard for me. So when I see other people have it, I get so envious at times um, because I just really, again, honor that belief and am, am so envious of that, you know, that your faith can really is, is that strong that it, you don't question. I think, I think it hasn't always been like that, you know, and I struggled when my father passed away. And even now I'm still healing. But I trust, I trust and believe that he's in a better place. And I have faith that he's not in pain anymore. So I find comfort in that. Right. So I trust God. I right. trust him with everything. So I may hear bad news today. I don't let it bother me because I know the father's going to take care of me. Right. Regardless, like you said, we're learning. We're learning. And every single day is shaping and molding us into the path in which God has for us. We're all destined. We're all destined on this earth to fulfill a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you want to run like Jonah in the Bible. It doesn't matter what you want to do. God will bring you to your purpose. Right. So it's better to just surrender and be obedient and, you know, fulfill what God has for you here on earth, you know, instead of you trying to figure it out yourself. And fight it. And like fight the, it. That's the best because is I fight it. Yeah. Eventually you're <laughs> going to do what he called you to do. <laughs> right. So... Um, and tell me, how do you see, well, and, you know, this is going to be a question because I, I think I know the answer to it. But if you had to say who inspired you the most, who would it be? I'll say the good Lord above mm -hmm. and my father. Good Lord above and my father. And then how do you see his spirit in your kids? So my, <laughs> so at my father's uh, funeral, Everybody talked about how intelligent he was. He was, a, he was a math teacher. Oh, wow, yeah. Super intelligent. Yeah. You know, and they say, you know, the children took, took upon, you know, my father's intelligence. My youngest son, my youngest son, Amari, he is so intelligent, like far beyond his age. Loves to read. It's not, it's not forced. It's not, he loves the alphabets. He loves one, two, threes. If it's not educational, he doesn't want it. And that's how my father was. Really? That's how we talk about, you know, sometimes the spirit of the ancestors, you know, kind of come. I really feel like, I don't, I don't believe in reincarnation. I believe in Lord above. But right. I feel like a lot of my father's characteristics is in my youngest son. Wow. And then, you know, we've spoken about Ghana here a lot. Can you tell me why that makes, why it's such a special place? So, last name Asante, being from the Ashanti tribe, we're a powerful people. I come from royalty. I come from a bloodline of kings and queens. Question? No, that's so cool. Yeah, so, 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 
literally, I I love I love my people and I love Ghana. And when I went back, just getting in tune with culture and just learning, I've been here since I was like nine years old. I hadn't been back for like for many 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 years. Okay. And even now, I'm learning my culture, and I want to learn more. And I'm intrigued by the Ghanaian culture, by the Ashanti culture. I'm still learning now. And just going back, I fell in love. I fell in love with the country. It's, it's so peaceful. My father, I inherited, I inherited 300 acres of land by a beachfront. And just being there on that soil, my father left me that. And I, and I failed to mention that. Just being there, just the presence, it's, it's so peaceful. The rapper, Bur- um, the rapper Burner Boy from Nigeria, he said that he only finds peace when he's in Ghana. You know, and uh, I thought it was kind of funny, but when I actually went back to my soil and started going back and visiting, it's just something about that soil. And I want to start right there at the core because that's where I know. And um, I have a lot of a lot of political tides back home in Ghana. So I'm able to, you know, move and get a lot of things accomplished right there on that soil. And after Ghana, my plan is to, you know, spread the wealth everywhere. And why do you think having connections to things are so important? Definitely is. It makes it makes things a lot easier. Um, being connected to the former president, um, Kofu, I can literally do anything I want. And I told him my vision and my plans for Africa and what I what, what I plan to do. And literally, he said, "Son, your vision for your vision for Ghana is fourth generational." He said, "You're a fourth generational thinker, like your father, Kwame Nkrumah. If you know who Kwame Nkrumah is, that uh, our first president of Ghana." So uh, he compared me to our first president, Kwame Nkrumah, when I was there. And I got goosebumps because I just went there to go tell him my vision of, 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 of empower, an empowerment, you know, bringing, you know, bringing work, bringing business, bringing uh, infrastructure to Ghana. And he was happy that, you know, the locals, you know, be able to have jobs to be able to feed their families. That's what he was excited about. So he said normally when, when people leave the nation, they don't come back with that kind right. of vision to be able to help the nation. So he was like, listen, son, what you're doing is good. And whatever you need from me, literally, I will help you. He said, it's not going to be easy and we might face some bumps on the road, but don't quit and keep doing it for your late father, which was his brother. Wow. Um, And how do you feel that, you know, the discipline you had being a professional athlete has really helped you moved into being a philanthropist? It's the same. It's just (laughs) the playbook, the playbook, the playbook is just a little bit different now, but it's the same, it's the same, it's the same approach. You know, you got to know your opponent. You got to know your opponent and you got to know yourself. The more you know your opponent, the more you know yourself the more you get accomplished, the, um, uh, the success rate is a lot greater. So it's no difference, but it's just a different audience, a different, a different uh, a target. Right. You know, and just m- maybe a little bit tweak in, in approach, but it's, it's still the same thing. It's still right. the same thing. Gathering a bunch of information, dissecting information, coming up with the best solution to be able to you know, influence and affect the people. And how do you think you talk yourself through the moments where you, you know, creating change is not, it's not it's easy. Not, at all. Right. And, you know, you have to go with the pace of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So like I struggle with that, too. Right. Like I want change. I want it now. Like I've done everything we can. But you, how do you talk yourself through that? Patience. And especially on that soil, um, literally taking patience. Uh, One of God's virtues. Right. Listen, yeah. And I pray and I pray for patience. And that's something that, you know, we all need to work on. I pray for patience every single day. I think patience and education, patience, and education and literally painting a picture and letting them know, man, listen, if we follow this guideline, if we follow the yeah. blueprint, you know, there's success and there's relief at the end, you know, but, you know, patience and let's all sacrifice in the beginning for greater good because it's all about the youth and us empowering the youth for a better future. And what impact have you made that really has just made your heart feel the most? I think to be able to feed a, feed an orphanage, I of a hundred of a hundred kids to be able to feed an orphanage of a hundred kids. I couldn't imagine. And 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 to see and to see people get baptized and to see people give their lives to Christ at the church and just people smiling, you know, that's what brings me joy. That's what brings me joy. So I I think, you know, seeing smiles on those those innocent children, 
um, who have lost their, their, their parents, um, who literally don't know their left from their right, just to see the smiles on their face because they receive textbooks, they receive uh, uniforms, and, and basically just a full belly. That's what inspires me, um, to be able to keep pushing and, and pursuing um, this entrepreneurship of equalizing the playing field, as I call it. And how do you meet them where they are? I mean, you are a professional you, athlete that has so. Li- so I, I, I'm, I, I'm so humble. I'm so humble, and I and I give time for everybody and anybody. It can be a little child. I'll sit there and I'll come to your level, look you in the eyes, and have a conversation with you. You know, I don't dismiss anybody. I don't care if you're the, you're the chief, the eldest. I don't so care if you're important. the king or if you're you're the youngest kid. I see everybody the same. I don't I don't say I try to play God, but I try to look at things from like God's perspective, you know, some may be higher, but from above that view on top, everything is equal. So when I go to that soil, I'm like an equal opportunist. You know, I'm from Ashanti, but there's all kinds of different tribes. It's not about that. You know, it's not about that. It's about helping a people. And that's what I'm about. And I, I am not biased as to, as to any coach. I'm, I don't care. I just want to help a people. And like, like you were saying, it doesn't matter if, if, if you're the oldest or the youngest. I just I meet people where they're at, and I try to understand them, you know, and, and, and just learn, just learn. And even now, I'm saying I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning on how, you know, I can still truly impact a people and how I can effectively bring change to a culture. And how do you want to be remembered? I think I want to be remembered like how my father was remembered as a man that, you know, literally poured his, his heart out to, you know, help people. And it didn't matter at the expense of, you know, him um, missing out on uh, different opportunities in life that, you know, may bring excitement to other people. I don't care about that. My goal is when I'm not, when the good Lord above decides to, you know, call me at my funeral, I want people to say, you know, similar things as to what people were saying about my dad. It was a man that loved people and literally helped and poured his heart out to a people to be able to affect and bring change. And for everyone listening, in order to empower um, Larry to do this, you can go to his website, right, to make donations and really join the community of people that he is bringing together to make a change. Um, thank you so much for being on today. Julie, I, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I was telling you, this, is, this, has, been, this has been beautiful. And it's been therapeutic, like I said, to be able to come here and share my story with y'all. Um, it's, it's a beautiful. Thank you for the platform. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Find Inspired Changemakers on Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn and comment on all the awesome things you are doing to make this world a better place. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.